Grandma, look at that koala! But she's already had her episode, hasn't she? As did the cheetah as well. Well, today is our last episode, and it will be about all our animal friends. We'll visit each of them again. In fact, they're the ones who have asked us to come to say hello. Is that true? I don't understand why they would do that. You don't? Don't you remember that at the end of each episode, you would finish by saying goodbye and don't forget our friends? Oh, right. I remember now. Well, you see, they're just like us. They want us to remember them and protect them when we can. They want to live in harmony with us. I want that too. Today, we will remind everyone of what we've learned in all the previous episodes about the different lives of our animal friends. Wow, it's going to be awesome, Grandma. I'm so excited. OK, let's see which animals you can still recognise. That's a crocodile. He must have just hatched. And those are budgies. They live in Australia. And look, there's a baby turtle. She's in a hurry to get down to the sea. And just watch the sea lions. I'm so jealous that they get to swim in the sea every day. So, let's go down and visit with our underwater friends. Wow! Clownfish, I like them the most. Oh, and here, a seahorse. I like him a lot as well. And the pelicans. Well, I guess I love all animals. That's good. That's how it's supposed to be. Everyone deserves to be loved as much as possible. Then I'm cool. I like everyone. The lions. The gazelles. So let's go meet some of our animal friends from previous episodes. Greetings, Mrs. Koala. Oh, actually two koalas. Koalas carry their babies on their backs and eat eucalyptus leaves every day and they eat a lot of them. That's right. This is why they live mainly in eucalyptus trees. It's also a safe place that's out of reach from dangers, like stray dogs. Oh, look at that cheetah! He's the fastest one of all! Yes, true, but only over short distances. If he has to go far, he gets overheated. These giraffes hardly ever respond back with a hello. Maybe they don't hear us all the way up there. <laughs> and kangaroos are the best jumpers. They carry their babies in a pouch on their belly. They graze on grass clearings and sometimes they kick each other when they're fighting for social status within their group, called a mob. Well, only they know how it really is. And who is this? Can you recognise him? Uh, yes. That's a little turn. He thinks the neighbour is sitting on that egg to prevent someone from stealing it. That's right. He's still afraid of many things, like crocodiles and other birds. Well, I'm afraid of crocodiles too. And these are bears from America. They hunt for salmon in rivers, but they have to watch out for wolves. That's right, because wolves can be sly. And when they travel in a pack, they can sometimes outsmart a bear and steal his food. In America and around the world, there are many different species of bear. And what about this snout? What animal can stick its nose inside anthills and termite mounds? That's an echidna. She has lots of spines. As she can't open a mouth very wide, she eats by using her tongue. She's not really using her tongue for eating, but the termites do get glued to it, and then she's able to fit them into the small opening of her mouth. And that's a kestrel, right? That's right. 
she's got excellent vision. From high above, she can see even the smallest movements on the ground. Even in mid-flight, she can stop very suddenly and search along the ground below. Oh, and a cat! This one is a domesticated cat, but we've also seen wild ones. Here they are! Even when they live with people, cats still live freely. They usually do whatever they want to do. Zebras live in the savannah, like wildebeest and antelopes. And do you know why they have stripes? Of course, to make them look pretty. Look at those ants! Those are the kind that live in trees and build their nests from leaves. That's right. Ants are very skilled and they know how to cooperate. That's why they are able to build such a complex nest and take constant care of it. And do you know which friend has these beautiful wings and a sliding sucker? It's a butterfly. They have to travel long distances to survive the winter. Yes, they're called monarch butterflies, and we've seen their transformation from caterpillar to a beautiful butterfly. And he's flying! The baby crocodile told us what it's like inside a crocodile's egg. He took us on a trip around the world, and all from inside his egg. He told us that he's not afraid of anyone. But that everyone should be afraid of him. Uh, that is when he grows up. But there was someone else who told us about what it was like inside an egg. Do you remember? Yes! Yes, it was a little budgie! Like the crocodile, she told us about everything she learned before she hatched. She was dreaming about the world outside and about budgies. Look how beautiful and colourful they are, especially when they fly in huge flocks. And notice how much they like each other. From the baby turtle, we learned that after hatching, not everything goes well. That's why it's essential to stay away from other hungry animals. Not everyone is friendly. She was so small and brave! But when all the obstacles are overcome, the waves of the sea welcome the turtle with a friendly embrace. I think that the sea lions love to be in waves most. They don't seem to do anything else but swim or lie on the beach. But even they have things of which they have to be very careful. Their life requires more than just basking near the seashore. They must hunt fish, right? Yes, but not only that, they also have to protect their family and territory. Whoa! A clownfish! It's always with the sea anemone. That's because the sea anemone protects the clownfish against predators in exchange for all the good care the clownfish give the sea anemone. They like each other a lot. The seahorses are beautiful as well. The small ones can camouflage themselves so they look like part of the coral. They not only imitate coral, but other animals that can give them protection. And in a seahorse family, the dad is the one who gives birth, isn't he? Yes. As opposed to humans and most other animals, seahorses have their roles reversed. And who is this trying to get out into the world? It's a pelican. That's right. And who was the silly Billy who said he looked just like a plucked chicken? It wasn't me. I like him because I think everyone is beautiful in their own way. Everyone is different, and that's a good thing. Hmm, it must have been someone else who was laughing at them. And did you?
did you like the story about the little dingo? Of course I did. It told the story of the baby dingo's birth and journey to the sea. I'm sure you remember that it was a long and interesting journey. He learned so many things on the way. But as he became an adult dingo, he learned that he did not have to be afraid. And the baby elephant learned to be less afraid of lions. And he showed us the usefulness of a trunk and all the great stuff he can do with it. <laughs> he can use it to grab the grass and even reach leaves from high up in the trees. And within the elephant herd, the boss is the strongest female. Oh, and on the savannah, we also met the gazelle. Adult gazelles like to fight each other for the right to eat the new green pasture. Yes, it's like a game for adults. And do you remember what species of gazelle this is? Of course! It's Tommy! That's close. They're called Thompson gazelles. And these are Brumbies! They're the wild horses of Australia. Brumbies most of all like the freedom to run wild. And he is the last animal we'll see today. We'll let him run anywhere he wants. And maybe one day he will come back to tell us about his new animal friends. The ones he met on his journey across the land. So, goodbye. We'll never forget any of our animal friends.